Thank you so much for coming tonight. My name is Jeff Atkinson. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications here at Wingate University, and you are in for a treat this evening. What a, a wonderful uh, evening we've already had. I hope you've had a chance to, to network and, and to meet some of these wonderful organizations here this evening. Let me tell you how this is going to work tonight. Um, four nonprofits were selected out of 14 submissions to compete for a chance to win a short film produced by the video production company Stories to Inspire, founded by our friend and former colleague from WBTV, Sarah Batista. Tonight, Sarah is going to, on this stage, interview each of the four groups in 10-minute segments. And the nonprofits you'll hear from, as Aaron's already introduced them, but let me do it one more time. The nonprofits you'll hear from, feel free to cheer. Charlotte Boxing Academy, I think they're over here. Joe Dance Film Festival. Heart Tutoring, Heart Tutoring. And Turnaround Toys. And they'll appear in that order here this evening. About halfway through the show, you'll also be treated to a chance to watch Stories to Inspire's uh, short film, a favorite film that they did in the year 2013. We're so excited about the stories that you're going to hear about tonight. And the best part is, you guys, you all, get to be, you get to pick the winner. Once everyone has appeared on stage, we're going to take a 15-minute break, and there is dessert out in the lobby, and you'll be directed to vote. And you've got a token here that you'll vote in a jar for each of the nonprofits. And as you go out this door on my right, you'll see the table right to the right. Once everybody votes, we'll count the votes, we'll come back in here to the theater and then announce the winner of the short film produced by Stories to, to Inspire, which is valued at $5,000. This film will help the winning nonprofit support their good work by sharing their story and spreading the message. And you'll also see here in the audience, we have cameras. This program is being videotaped by Wingate University Television and will be shown on WUTV Channel 22 and Channel 97-3 on Time Warner Cable, and it'll also appear on YouTube. So uh, stay tuned for that. Our YouTube channel, just so you'll know if you live in Mecklenburg County or any, any area outside Union County, it's youtube.com slash Wingate University. So we'll have all this produced in a, about an hour show uh, in about a, a week or so. But before we get started, I want to introduce tonight's host and the founder and creative director of Stories to Inspire. Sarah Batista is an award-winning TV journalist, entrepreneur, and speaker. Before launching her film production company, Stories to Inspire, Sarah worked more than a decade as a reporter and anchor in local television news. In 2013, she left WBTV Channel 3 News in Charlotte to pursue her dream of documentary filmmaking. Stories to Inspire so specializes in filming the stories things. of nonprofits wow. Wow. to inspire so action, change, Perhaps. and giving. As a reporter, Sarah covered a wide range of, of issues, and she draws upon that in her storytelling and speaking. Ms. Batista earned a bachelor uh, degree in communication studies at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. She contributes to the weekly news magazine Carolina Impact on WTVI, PBS Charlotte, and is a freelance producer as well for NBC News Channel, a network news service that's also in Charlotte. How she finds the time to do all that is beyond me. So, we're going to have fun tonight. I'm glad you all are here. Ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce Sarah Batista. First of all, thank you so much for coming out. We didn't know what kind of crowd or how many people would come out tonight. We just, you know, I just had an idea a couple months ago and said, this is something that I want to do. And I called Jeff Atkinson, who uh, I worked with at WBTV, who was a fellow reporter. Uh, who I respect, and uh, Kristen Johnson, who also works here at Wingate, and I said, hey, I got this idea, you know, what do you think about it? And he immediately said, let's do it here. Let's do it here. Let's make a production out of it. I'm like, okay. So at that point, I had to do it, right? Because I'm like, if someone's going to support us and provide us with this space and just be all on board, how could we turn that down? So thank you, thank you, thank you to Jeff Atkinson and Kristen Johnson here at Wingate University. And so we're expecting some storytelling and film. WUTV, Wingate's channel, will be filming this 
and we'll also have it on an email link later. It's going to be on their channel. So we're really excited about that. It's a little bit of everything tonight, but the bottom line is that we want you to walk away feeling inspired by the amazing work of these nonprofits. Can we please give them a hand? And I also want to say special thanks to our sponsors because a lot of times we have dreams and we have goals and we have visions, but we can't do it all ourselves. We need people who are willing to step up and say, hey, I can help you. I'll help you with that. I'll help you put this event on, like Jeff. And so I really want to thank Wingate University, WUTV, Arthur Griffin, Benham Companies, Breland Treats, Community Culinary School of Charlotte, Medios Interactive, Garcia Talent and Consulting, and Capo Integrated and Consulting. If you are here, please stand so we can give you an applause. Now before we get started, we want to share a two-minute highlight reel of what we've done over the past year at Stories to Inspire. And it explains a little bit more about Stories to Inspire and the organizations that we've worked with. Uh, some of those include Hope Cancer Ministries, where we told the story of Dee Mobley, a breast cancer survivor who uh, Hope Cancer helped her get through her most difficult time. We've done a call to action piece, encouraging parents to get involved and to prevent teen pregnancy. And we told the story of Alif, who spent pretty much all of his life on the streets, but got back to work thanks to the nonprofit, The King's Kitchen. What you're about to see in this video are snapshots. They're moments in life, and they're pieces of those videos and those stories that we told. Enjoy. I've known forever, really, since I was a small child, that I wanted to become a journalist. For 10 years, I was a television reporter and an anchor. It was, it was a great time. I had so many wonderful experiences, but there was something I realized that was happening, and that was that there were many great stories that were not making the news. I wanted to make sure that those stories were being told, and that's how I came up with the idea of Stories to Inspire. Daddy, that looks like you. <laughs> After I got cancer. Stories to Inspire is a video production company. Our goal is to really inspire change, action, and giving through storytelling. to inspire for a video, you're not just getting a video, it's the experience, and that's really what we're all about. I'm going to bring out Charlotte Boxing Academy. And joining me now is Alvin Simpson. He is the executive director of Charlotte Boxing Academy and Kendra Macon, who is a student, sort of, or not so much anymore. Not, not She's anymore. She's a champion now. <laughs> She's no longer a student. But Alvin, I just wanted to ask you, because I know you came back from a trip recently, a competition. Yes. How did you do? Uh, we did very well and stuff. We had the uh, U.S. team box against uh, Russia. That was in, uh, we had training that was in Colorado Springs, and then from there, 
uh, the competition within New York, so they did very well up there. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations on that. Um, Charlotte Boxing Academy takes kids off the streets and teaches them boxing in a controlled environment. And I've been talking to Alvin, I know a little bit about his story, but it started very young and it was, you, you came from a good family, but the streets were calling you. And who was it that introduced you to boxing? Well, uh, growing up, I uh, was born and raised in, Phil in New York City and then uh, moved to Philadelphia uh, in mid-term mid of that. And, um, at that time, like I said, you know, I had uh, both of my parents were there and so forth, but a lot of activity was going on outside in the streets and things of that nature there. So because of getting into a lot of trouble, it just so happened that right down, two houses down from me, uh, there was a police officer that lived there. So instead of uh, taking me into jail, he took me to another center. He took me to a center which actually was a boxing gym. And they had a lot of other things there. And um, from that moment on, it uh, totally began to change me at that time. Mm -hmm. Did you ever imagine where it would take you? Not, not in the slightest, not in the slightest. Because I started, I started actually boxing when I was 10 years old and um, graduated in from Philadelphia. And then from there, I went into the military. So I did uh, 28 years in the Army, retired as a first sergeant. But while I was in the military, I was the uh, head assistant coach for the U.S. team, for the U uh, Army team. So a lot of my training and everything went with being in the military and also coaching the Army and, and so forth and everything. Mm -hmm. And when did you decide that you wanted to take that passion and turn it into an organization that would inspire other young people? Um, it happened uh, probably about a good 20 years ago. I was about to retire from uh, the military and um, it just so happened that Charlotte was uh, looking for a head coach to uh, keep the program going. Um, I had never worked with you, uh, youth before or any other kids and everything, but I noticed, I know that as um, far as, I'm the head assistant coach for the U.S. Olympic team, so what I'm able to do is that now we have a lot of young kids that have the opportunity of not just going into boxing, but also to have their dream of being an Olympian. So uh, we pushed that. So with me coming into the Charlotte Boston Academy, that was one of my goals is actually to produce another Olympians, uh, anyone that had the opportunity of doing it. But also I kind of tweaked it a little bit because in our program we have scholarships for kids uh, and also students. So any of my students that actually get to the 11th and 12th grade, then we produce a scholarship for them so that they can go ahead and put it in. Um, along with that, now every, all the kids that are on my boxing team, uh, we do a mentorship where we go to their schools, uh, we mentor how they're doing their grades and so forth. So we, we try to be constructive outside of the ring as well as inside the ring. That's great. Yes. And I want to bring you in. Uh, you are a student there. Yes. And when you started, you were probably on the older side mm -hmm. of what some of the, although you're not old by any means, yeah. but, but, but you were on the older side of what some of the other students were. Right. And how did it impact your life? You were going through some things. I, I definitely was. I came in um, at the age of 22, which is over the age, because usually they're from eight to 18 um, years of age. And um, when I came in, I was actually battling uh, with alcohol and drug use and um, had been dealing with some with depression and anxiety, um, things with my family, whatnot. And I came into the program as a way out of what I was going through. And when I came in, because I was older, I kind of had in my mind, I was like, oh man, I have to be an example to these kids because you know I'm older. But they were really more of an example to me because of how disciplined they were, how dedicated they were to the program. And it encouraged me and inspired me to keep going because there were days where, I mean, back to back to back, we were training and I was, you know, just tired, just fed up with kind of things. it's intense. Were, it, it is very intense. there's a intense. reason, right? There's a reason oh, why absolutely. it's intense. I mean, they want to keep yes. you on your toes. Keep you going and, yeah. and keep your, your mind and your... Mm -hmm. uh, or focus occupied as yes. much as possible. I think that that's a picture of you. Yes. So when, when we I know you're in. a champion, right? You've won some championships. Absolutely. I actually ranked fifth in the nation um, 2011 at the USA Nationals. It was my first appearance out there at the USA Nationals, and I ranked fifth in the nation. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
and it, that meant a lot to me because that was my first time um, traveling so far out. Uh, we went out to Colorado Springs that year and we fought for, at, at the USA Nationals and um, it was 14 girls in my weight class and it was the first time I had been there. And I mean, the other girls that were there, they had fought 65 to 100, 200 fights and I had only at the time maybe 15. And for him to have enough faith in me to actually go out and compete, um, it, it, it was really, it meant a lot to me. And um, it was a huge confidence builder during that time when I was going through, you know, what I was going through in my personal life, so. Well, thank you guys. Great story. We appreciate your time on the stage. Your extraordinary future begins at Wingate University with more than 35 undergraduate majors and graduate and professional programs in the health sciences, business, and education. Wingate University's enrollment has mushroomed and construction has skyrocketed in the past two decades. And Wingate is the sixth best value in the South, according to U.S. News & World Report. Most importantly, Wingate graduates get jobs that are working all over the Carolinas and the U.S. Major in a great life at Wingate University. So uh, I'm joined now by Diane Ristano, and uh, she's the executive director of Joe Dance Film Festival. Yep. And filmmaker, filmmaker Will Davis, who I have a story to tell about him at the end. Um, <laughs> this is sort of a full circle moment because we went to school together, and we hadn't seen each other in like 10 years at least, so uh, you just never know. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Diane, I, I just want to talk with you about your organization. It's come a long way yes. in you know, four or five years. Talk yes. about how it started. It started because of your son, Joe, who passed away from bone cancer at the age of 20. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that, that's tough for any parent. So talk about how you found out and sort of how that developed. Um, the, for the film festival. So uh, it actually started with the conversation with Joe before he passed away. He had started a bone cancer walk in Chattanooga. Um, he went to school at Macaulay and he was, it was getting close to the end and he gave the walk to Macaulay. But then he turned to me and he said, you know, there's a lot of my friends in, in North Carolina and Charlotte, and I'd like you to raise money in North Carolina. And I s promised him I would, but I thought I was sitting there going, well, all right, you gave the walk away, Joe, <laughs> so what are we going to do? And I don't know, just uh, an idea came to uh, my husband and a friend of mine that we should do a film festival, and we should charge for it. And then we said, you know, we really can't do that because that's not fair to the other HOAs in our neighborhood. So we decided to do a donation-only film festival and raise money for Levine Children's Hospital. We started with 15 people the first night, two nights. Yeah, I, I think I remember you saying it was like in the backyard or something, or it, camped it's, out. It was a very small crowd. And we had 15 people. It was in the courtyard behind our townhouses. It is still in our courtyard behind our townhouses, but we had about 160 people each night, and we sold, uh, showed original films. Um, there were nine films over two nights the first weekend in August. Wow. I want to talk a little bit about Joe. Mm -hmm. What was he like, and what was that like for you as a mother when you heard that your child had cancer? That's just not something that we expect as parents. And I'm sure you, you probably thought he, you maybe thought he would beat it. I'm not sure. But what was that like for you? Well, it's probably the most devastating, actually devastating news you'll ever hear. Um, because it is a very rare cancer. Um, about 50% of the children that are diagnosed survive after five years. Um, yes, you think you are going to beat it, um, and you fight till the end. But, um, you know, I, we try to remember Joe and his spirit, and it lives on in that film festival and the work that we're doing. Um, and you know, raising money for research to make it maybe not a bone cancer is probably not in the category of a curable disease, a cur curable cancer, but you know, we could probably find a better way to treat the kids, uh, look kinder, more gentler. Mm -hmm. So, and all the money that you raise goes to pediatric cancer research at uh, Levine yes. Children's Hospital, right? So, when you first donated to them, how much did you donate? Uh, the first year, um, in 2010, we donated $950. This year, we will donate 
And I believe you donated one year twenty thousand dollars. That was last year. We donated twenty thousand dollars last year, so and we're doing thirty this year. So, so, how does the film festival work? How does what's the flow of it generally? And you can talk about that, Will, because you're the filmmaker. Yeah. Um, so the way the film festival works, it's uh, it's definitely community involved. Every film that's submitted is by someone who either lives in Charlotte or grew up in Charlotte. Um, all the films were either filmed in Charlotte or the context or content in some way has to do with the Charlotte area. Um, the filmmakers come and we divide them in over the course of two nights, one feature and some shorts and they speak after and it's non-competitive festival. They're just there to um, build the community of people that support the arts and those who create all for raising funds for this great cause. And any genre of filmmaking is uh, accepted anything from documentary to music video narrative and so on and um, in the last two years we've had a uh, nearly triple increase in the films that are submitted and because of that we had to expand the number of films that we showed just to mm -hmm. show as many as we could and what's the greatest lesson that you've learned in all of this turning that devastation into something else that could help other children well I'll tell you what um, I can speak personally for me. Um, I know that everyone that's involved with Joe Dance, they're very passionate about it. Um, giving back was something that has helped me after Joe passed away. But some of the wonderful things that you get involved with, it's not just raising money. I mean, I think about us going um, to the hospital every month with Modern Salon and Spa to, um, do, do salon services for moms and dads, siblings that are in the hospital all the time. When you see the smile on those, on those people's faces and how grateful they are, and to know you know how grateful they are because you were there. To think about things that, you know, yes, I, wanna, I want to find research projects that are going to help these rare cancers. But to find a program that's going to help the families get through the, th through the process, um, to me, that's been the most rewarding. Um, and just, just the connection into the community. I mean, I just feel that everybody is very, very um, aware that we support Charlotte. We support our hospital in Charlotte. Um, we support our filmmakers. Um, and we support our neighborhood with the commitment of always keeping it in our courtyard, which is our neighborhood is, front, is fourth ward. And it's truly a neighbors helping neighbors. And when you start doing those kind of things, it's amazing how somebody will come up to you and say, you know, I've heard about you. What can I do to help? And to me, that's the most re rewarding, really. I, I agree. I agree. Um, the beauty services that you offer for, is it children in the hospital? It, no, actually it's for the, it is not for the children, it's actually for the moms and the dads. For the moms and the dads, the parents, okay. It's for the parents. And this was out of your own experience because you didn't get a haircut for a very long time. No, Joe was, when Joe was diagnosed, um, we went directly into the hospital and I had, my hair was probably two inches short all around my head and when we finished, it was this long. Wow. I had never, I, no, you never went to, and everyone would, the funny thing is, is everyone would say, you know, you really need to go have a massage. Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, I, I know I do, but you know, but I'm, my son's yeah, having chemotherapy right. that's very volatile. No, right. I don't think I'll have a massage. Yeah, no, but, but you, to bring well, you it probably to, did need a massage, but it's just <laughs> no. the timing. So we bring it to them, and they basically, can just go down 11 floors, be in the same place, and now what's really cool is their brothers and sisters are coming down, and you know, before it was just women, and now like the dads are coming down because they haven't had a haircut in three weeks and mm -hmm. they need to go back to work or something like that. It's really been fun, and Modern Salon and Spa are, are extraordinary partners. They are, they just, that whole organization just has a servant's heart. Well, that's great. Well, we think you do too. So thank you so much for joining us. And we are going to take a moment. Give it up for Joe Dance Film Festival.
Planning your next step in life? Come complete your education in a dynamic, caring environment at Wingate University. Enrollment and construction have skyrocketed in the past two decades as students pursue challenging and rewarding degrees in fields like the health sciences, business, and education. U.S. News & World Report has named Wingate University the sixth best value in the South. Visit one of our three great campuses, Wingate, North Carolina, Hendersonville, or Charlotte, or check us out at wingate.edu. Major in a great life at Wingate University. I'm here now with Heart Tutoring, Emily Elliott, uh, who runs Heart Tutoring. And they provide, they provide tutoring services in low-income schools. This actually was started by your mom and another group about four years ago. How did it come about? Yeah, um, that was interesting because my mom and I, there's kind of two different, the two different sides of the story were happening at the same time. My, my mom, and this might be indicative of people in here who had the same experience, my mom had the experience of sort of a frustrated tutor. She was an empty nester at the time. She wanted to help students, but she knew when she showed up to schools, teachers had to um, go to the extra mile to prepare for her. It wasn't always clear if her efforts were making a full impact, but yet she had time and interest in helping students catch up to grade level. Um, and meanwhile, I was teaching sixth grade math in California, and um, story of, you know, Christian and Marisol, which is reflective of a broader trend, but Christian and Marisol both came to my class as sort of B, B minus math students, and it looked like they could follow along. They knew how to carry their ones and follow the procedures and get the answers, um, but as the year went on and we started hitting the next level proportions, fractions, percentages. They just tanked. And I, we, were, we had an eight to five school day. I had 35 students in my classroom. I was tutoring um, before school at lunch and, and I was tutoring the very lowest students. Christian and Mari Sol sort of came in middle of the pack, but by the end of sixth grade, they had Fs, they had failed math. Um, the, the foundational skills of understanding what they were doing weren't there. Um, and I, so I saw firsthand how resource constrained schools were. Meanwhile, uh, my mom was over here asking the Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools um, chief academic officer, what can volunteers do? We know that teachers need help. What can we do that's not going to put a burden on teachers, but feels gratifying and, and is actually helpful for students? So through that, they formed um, and piloted a um, a program that provides a curriculum and on-site support to volunteers and it was working and it was growing. Um, How many volunteers did you start with? They started with 30. Mm -hmm. um, word spread 80 the next year, word of mouth. Um, last year was my first year here and we had 120. Wow. Um, we think that I think that there are thousands of people in Charlotte who would be willing to do this. It's a one hour a week commitment and every person who signs up um, completely changes the experience of a student's school year. Mm -hmm. We measure an increase in math skills and we measure an increase in confidence. Mm. Um, and sometimes you just need that one person to invest in you, to take an interest, to, be, to mentor you. Mm -hmm. You heard from Alvin earlier with Charlotte Boxing Academy. He said it was a police officer that helped him and got him interested in, in boxing. So mm -hmm. I think sometimes we underestimate our impact. Yeah. And you had given me some statistics earlier. Yeah. What were those statistics? Yeah, the, um, in Charlotte Mecklenburg schools, um, the 70% of economically disadvantaged students are performing below grade level in math. Um, and that's 70%. Yeah, that's 54,000 kids that are economically disadvantaged and not on grade level. But when you tutor, you see it's not, it's not an intelligence issue. We should have, this community should have everybody on grade level. It's a, it's a lack of hands-on experience with the numbers. And we can go in with our curriculum and with our blocks and cubes and cards and fill in gaps. These students are sitting in fifth grade and they, miss, they missed important math skills they should have gotten in first and second grade. The teacher doesn't have time to go back to that. But our tutors come in, we assess them, we figure out what the gaps are, and we, um, and we close the gaps with, with our curriculum. What's your, what's your goal? Where do you want to take hard tutoring in the next few years? What would be, like, just make you so happy? <laughs> yeah, well, there's, we're in four schools right now. We were in two last year. We're try, we're, it's a replicable program. 
and there's 46 Title I schools in Charlotte. So I'd like to see Hart in 20 of the schools. Um, you know, that's a thousand volunteers who are spending an hour a week. The, it's it's Bank of America analysts. It's empty nesters. It's um, and and what's what would be so helpful about this video is it would help. We're a small staff, but a video would help tell our story to more people. When people hear about this, they want to do it, and they keep doing it. Satisfaction is very high from our volunteers. So I, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see you know people walking down the street, and it's just become the norm that you spend 30 minutes at an elementary school on Wednesday morning before work. And that, I think people may say, well, that you know it's an hour mm -hmm. here, an hour there. But it really can have an impact if you're consistent. Mm -hmm. And you know you really connect with these kids. Yeah, big collective impact. Um, I, I got I, I I used to work in finance. I majored majored in econ, and I got into education because um, of seeing when you when you're a volunteer tutor, you can see that students should be on grade level. You can see them grow. It's exciting. Um, and I met a girl. Um, when I was, I met a homeless um, girl over a holiday dinner. She was as cute as could be. She told me her name. I said, where do you go to school? And she told me the school. And I said, oh, that's weird. I'm from Charlotte, and I've never heard of that school. She said, I swear that school feels invisible sometimes. Hmm. Invisible. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's how we want our children to feel, but when they're not getting the skills they need and, um, and they're not interacting with anything outside of their neighborhood, it feels that way. And right now, um, you know, fourth grade CJ, his tutor got transferred to London. Now he knows where London is. He has an address to write to. Uh, third grade Davion's tutor goes to UNCC and told him what it means to take 18 hours, what it is to, to get great. a master's degree. So That's I think there's, there's a lot going on with this um, in addition to just being a good resource for schools. Well, good luck to you, Emily. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Give it up for Hart Tutoring. What is Wingate? A thriving university nestled in a quiet community near Charlotte. Named sixth best value in the South by U.S. News & World Report. Leading the way in the health sciences with pharmacy, PA studies, and nursing. What is Wingate? Big enough to offer 22 NCAA sports. Small enough to attract the best and brightest in the world. What is Wingate? Wingate is you. Wingate University, major in a great life. We're here with Turnaround Toys, Lynn and Nestor Fitzgerald. They provide gently used toys to children who are in need. And Lynn, you have a really interesting story about where this idea came from. Uh, because your toys were very important to you as a child. Yes. Talk about that. You grew up in foster homes. Yes. So talk about that. Um, well, I remember when I was two, living in the projects and um, living with my brother and my sister. And I remember my brother saying, um, hurry up, go hide, they're here. And um, so he, they meant social services. And um, they were coming to take us away. And um, going into uh, my first foster home, it was um, obviously, it's not a glorified place to be. It's really scary, you know, you're you know, a little child, and you are in an environment that's completely different, and nothing is yours, and, you know, just whatever you come with is yours. And um, through, I lived there until I was about 13, and um, it was really physically and mentally abusive. And um, so again, these were your safety, these were your friends, these were, the things that you went to. And so when you grew your sustainability. up, you kept some of your toys. Did you keep some of your toys as you grew up? Were you able to? No. You weren't able I, to. I did all the way up until like college, and then somehow mm. they got lost. But it gave you the idea. It inspired yeah. you to start Turnaround Toys, because you wanted to provide other children who may not be able to afford toys yes. um, a chance to have a toy that would comfort them. Yes. So who, tell me how Turnaround Toys works. How do you? give these kids toys? Do you have monthly events? Yes, we have uh, events that are monthly. And we collect gently used toys from the community. And um, then we refurbish them and things like that. And what we do is we hold celebration events. And we believe that all children need to be celebrated. 
And with our celebration events um, comes not just, um, every child will walk away with a book, a toy, and a stuffed animal at every event. But on top of it, um, we're celebrating them. So, you know, there needs to be balloons and um, face painting and um, arts and crafts, uh, music, we play games with them. And we really just want them to have a great time. Forget about whatever's going on in their world. And the way that you present it is important, right? I'm sorry? The way you present the toy to them is important. Yes, and they um, actually what we do is they, they get to go shopping mm -hmm. at the end of the event. So volunteers um, will come and they can um, pick out the to their toy of choice, uh, a book and a stuffed animal. And you of want, their choice. Because you were showing me earlier how you presented to them and it was in a bag. And, yes. And that's and for a reason because you want them to feel like they're getting a toy that's not used necessarily by someone else. Right. It's all packaged up uh, in every um, thing that w is essential to that toy. So if it's a baby doll, then, you know, she has a bottle. She has a blanket. She has, you know, different things that will coincide. So it's not just, here's your toy. How many children have you served, do you know, since you've started? We have served well over 7,000. 7,000 kids mm -hmm. who did not have toys. Wow. Uh, and I think that's interesting because we, that's another thing we just take for granted. And we're like, you know, anybody can buy a toy, a $5 toy, a $10 toy, but not really. I mean, when you're trying to make the rent or you're trying to buy groceries, mm -hmm. a $5 toy just doesn't make the list, exactly. you know, oftentimes. Um, Nestor, I want to bring you in because you have an interesting story as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a connection to toys, yes. too. It was, has a special place in your heart. Your father in Brazil, correct? Correct. Uh, took you to go get a toy. Yes. And what did you pick out? Well, I picked out this large boat. And when I saw it, I knew I wanted it. It had little itty bitty lifeboats around it, big uh, smokestacks. And I can see it in my mind right now, red, black, and white. And I, I, I'm carrying it. It meant so much to me. And your father took you to pick it yes. out, right? What did he tell you that day when, when he took you? Well, what he told me was, this is my um, love to you, which is incredible to me because I did not know that at that time what I was happened not after going that? to see him again. Right. Pretty soon after that, I was adopted into the United States, and I got on an airplane and as we were uh, taken off, the airplane caught fire. And we had to land, and then we had to quickly be taken off of the uh, airplane, and we went to some other, somebody else's uh, house, and we stayed there for a few days. And then we got this call, and you've got to get on the plane, you've got to get on the plane. And so as we were rushing to get on the airplane, I forgot my boat. Mm. And to this day, I, I just regret it so much because as I got to the United States, several months later, I discovered, uh, I was told that my father had died. Wow. And so I had lost my father. I had lost the toy that he had given to me, the attachment to him, and then I lost him again. Wow. And so all that together was... That's a lot for a young person. Uh, yeah, and you're seven, eight years old. And so I can see by the kids that we serve, and we really love up on them because we can identify where they are. The thing that you just said, um, striving for food, for rent, for gas, for the car, who gets left out is the little kid. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to serve and love up on because we know they need. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to that, touch back on that moment that your father took you to pick up the mm -hmm. toy, just to clarify. So he took you to pick up the toy and then what happened? He, he got a job, is that right? Or he, he left, and you never saw him again. He, he, he got, the circ I mean, I was very young. It's very circ um, um, the, the events that occurred there right before that was that, maybe this is what you're alluding to, I'm not sure, is that one day I was coming back to my house. I was playing with some kids mm -hmm. away from the house. And um, when I got there, there were so many um, people at our house. I didn't do a lot of commotion, didn't know what was going on. And my family, I had four brothers and sisters and my mom and my dad, they had eaten rat poison. <laughs> and that's oh why gosh. we went into an orphanage and we were separated. And he came and saw us for one last time at the orphanage. My genetic brother and I were adopted into the same family. 
but the other brothers and sisters, um, we didn't see them. And then the events took place, as you said, my father took me to um, the toy store and I picked out a toy that I loved and I connected that with my father. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm you sure never that's saw him, him again? I never saw him again, wow. that was it. Wow, um, Lynn, what, what is your vision? What, you know, this question is for both of you, but where would you like to see this organization go in the future? Well, right now we are um, trying to chapter, go state to state. Um, we want to be identified as um, a goodwill or, you know, Salvation Army, something like that, that is standard in every state, um, but everything is free. Mm -hmm. And um, just really start going into countries um, and loving on kids in orphanages and whether we're there physically or whether we just have a relationship and we're sending toys to a child monthly that is in, you know, wherever, Haiti, Africa, um, you know, Peru, to, to be in a situation that you can't control and is, is very sad or frightening, but to receive a gift once a month, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. It'd be like Christmas once a month. That's awesome. Yeah, who wouldn't want that? I know, right? Well, we think you guys are doing amazing work. Thank you so much. Turn around, toys. Give them an applause. <laughs> Jeff Atkinson is going to give you some instructions on what to do next. I am so encouraged. Can you hear me? You know, there are so many great groups. Again, the show we've been doing so many great things. But this has blessed my heart just hearing what these groups have done tonight. Let's give them all a great time. I don't know. You were given a uh, token, a kind of a little marble when you came in. So. Uh, reach in your pocket or your purse or wherever you put that during the, the program and we're going to bring up the house lights we're going to go out into the lobby there's a, a time for us to enjoy dessert and as you do that before you get your dessert take your token and there's a jar for each of the nonprofits of the four that you've heard tonight and you can cast your vote for who you would like to receive the stories to inspire produced video worth $5,000. So you're dismissed now, let's go have dessert and you can do the voting and we'll be back in about 15 minutes. Your extraordinary future begins at Wingate University with more than 35 undergraduate majors and graduate and professional programs in the health sciences, business and education. Wingate University's enrollment has mushroomed and construction has skyrocketed in the past two decades. And Wingate is the sixth best value in the South, according to US News and World Report. Most importantly, Wingate graduates get jobs. They're working all over the Carolinas and the U.S. Major in a great life at Wingate University. You have cast your votes, and those votes have been totaled. So we'll read them together, and Jeff. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to give the mic to you, and I was going to get off the stage. <laughs> no, no, we'll read them together. So I have not seen, so I don't know who it is. Uh, and the winner of the Stories to Inspire free video is Turnaround Toys! Woo! Come on up! Come on up! <laughs> so congratulations! Congratulations! Thank you guys for coming. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah. And here's a trophy since we don't have a video to give you right now. We will be filming it in the next few months uh, and they'll be able to use it for uh, promotion, online, internet, web, pretty much anything they want to use it for, but it'll help you tell your story. And I actually, somebody walked up to me before she left and she said, or I think she may even st still be here, but she said, she, there she, she said she lost everything and you guys helped her. I think it, she had a fire and mold. She, mold, mold and they lost, they lost everything and you guys were there to help her out and um, you know, provide toys for her kids. So she's walking away thinking, what is she gonna, what does she wanna start now? What nonprofit does she wanna do? What work is she gonna do? So that's really what our goal was tonight, to really inspire you and show you what other stories are out there and hopefully give you some sort of momentum to carry out of here and to go change the world, folks. All right, have a good night. Yeah.